Hi everybody, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage, and look who's back. It's Miss Lemon Drop. Now you may remember that I got a call because Miss Lemon had pooped out on the side of the road, and we did some diagnostic work and found out it was the pump that had gone bad, and more importantly, the pump rod. So Jerry's brought the car by, and he has a whole kit, a new pump, rod, phenolic spacer, the whole nine yards, and we're going to go ahead and install all that. I'll run you through the process for today. So we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect our fuel lines first and plug them off. And then we'll remove the old pump. We may have to move the carburetor up a little bit. I don't know. There's a little bit of an infer interference problem with this uh, pump, the way it's designed. Then with the pump off, we'll pull this phenolic spacer out and the old rod and such. Then we'll install our new gasket, then our new phenolic spacer, then another gasket, and then we'll drop our rod in. And we're going to, at that point, kind of crank the engine over by hand and move it around a bit. We want to just check to make sure that that rod's got the right movement up and down. When we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and pack the bottom of the pump with grease and install it and retorque our bolts to 18 foot pounds. And then we will uh, put a T line on a T connection onto this and hook up our fuel pressure gauge to the output of the pump. Because we want to verify that the pressure is the correct. It should be about 3,400 RPM. It should be about 2.8 PSI and it should never go above 3.5 PSI. If it does, it can overdrive the float bowl and the carburetor and gas will just pour into the throttle body and that's just terrible. So. Once we're done with that and we're happy with all that, we can adjust gasket thicknesses if we need to to get the to reduce or increase our pressure, whatever we need to do. All right, after that, we just pull our, our gauge out, reconnect the fuel line, and we're all done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air cleaner just to get it out of the way and make things a little bit easier. This is a 10 millimeter under here and an original air bath air cleaner. Pretty neat here. And then there we go. All right, we have to remember to keep these things level. They're filled full of oil. With the air cleaner out of the way, it's a lot easier to see everything in here. One thing I want to mention is before we get started on any of the pulling the fuel lines and such, to have a fire extinguisher ready, just in case the unthinkable happens, you'll be ready for it. So we're gonna we're gonna set this where we can get at it very quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and start by pulling our fuel lines off and capping them off. There's a good chance we'll get a little dribblage, so I'm putting just putting a rag over here. All right, we loosen these guys up. Should be able to take this off. I'm sure this is going to piddle a little bit as it comes out. There we go. Let's put that in there. This is the line in from the tank. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to put a long Phillips head screwdriver in that. That'll work really well. Set that over there. Okay. Now the fuel pump is held on with 13 millimeter nuts. I have a kind of a little universal joint here. Uh, you might be able to get back there with a smaller, uh, just in, like a closed end wrench or something. Whatever works for you. Once you've got it loose, you can take it out the rest of the way by hand. Remember, you've got a washer back here as well. Come on, kiddo. Okay. We can do our front one here. Might have to loosen up the carburetor to get it out. All right. Hopefully, we should be able to get this up enough. Get this guy off. Yes. 
There we go. All right, fabulous. And look at that. Isn't this fun? Our uh, little rubber guy we put on for our fix. Look at that, still there, still doing its job. Isn't that great? That's awesome. All right, now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the carburetor again. I just don't wanna forget. Doesn't have to be super tight, just snug. Now let's take a look at this. Oh, we've got a gasket on here. Pull that off. And here's our rod. We'll pull out the old rod. Now, one thing I do want to mention about these, this is the old rod, and this is the new one. Take a look at the tips on that. So the new rod, and they're both flat on the end, and also, they're a little bit different lengths, of course. Now, this one's a little bit longer, which is great. Somebody has ground this down, and that was riding on the cam. That's kind of a bad thing. This has got a nice rounded tip on it. So if you ever do grind one of these, you should always leave it rounded, first of all. And second of all, probably more importantly, they really shouldn't be ground. You should be able to fix this issue with uh, gaskets, really. That's how you change this. But uh, this rod's just obviously way too short. Look at that, see how much shorter it is? Got it lined up at the bottom there, and it's a decent amount shorter. Now this plastic phenolic bit should come straight out. And the most important thing about this is that it shouldn't be broken at the end. So these can get stuck inside the engine and then they can snap off. And if they do, you gotta get that extra bit out of there. It's kind of a bad thing if it, if it, if it stays in the engine. So uh, there's a couple of weird procedures to get these things out using maybe like a tap that's just the right size that can cut into it and pull it up. So um, at any rate, that can be a really big issue. This one was just very loose and just basically sitting in there. And we should have, we do, an old gasket here. Try to get that up without causing any fuss. Oh, there it goes. Come on, kiddo. There we go. Okay, remember this is a hole into the engine, so be careful. Don't drop anything in there. If you're going to leave it open for any length of time, stick a rag in there. We'll go ahead and clean this surface really well. We don't want it to leak. There's just a little leftover gasket sealant on there, so just sort of scrub it off and make sure you got a nice, clean, smooth surface. Our next step is going to be to prep our two gaskets and uh, get our phenolic spacer ready to go in. Uh, I think you can use grease on these and that's probably fine. I actually have some Permatex number two I'm gonna use on this. So it's just a gasket sealant, works really well. This stuff is just has a consistency of a really thick grease. You just wanna coat both sides. Don't go crazy with it, you just need enough to coat it. So just sort of like this. has a smell to it that brings back lots of memories. Okay, now we can just fit the first gasket over the top here like this. Let that to sit down, there we go. Next we go ahead and place our phenolic spacer over the top. It only goes one way. With our first gasket on, we just repeat the same for the second gasket and put it on top of the phenolic spacer. All right, we can set that on top now. Next step is to put in our rod. So we want to just go ahead and coat this thing with a little bit of grease. Once again, don't go crazy, just enough to sort of coat it and just drop it in. There we go. Now the next thing we want to check is the travel of this pin up and down. 
So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the car is in neutral and the brake is on. And we're going to disconnect our rotor cap here. We don't want any chance at the engine starting, of course. And we're going to turn the engine over and we're going to find the point of the maximum travel. And I believe that's going to be very close to top dead center of cylinder number one. So that also makes it really nice to take over the distributor so you can see where the rotor is on that. So let's go ahead and make sure the car is chalked up and that we've uh, got the car in neutral. Let's connect this. Connect this. Let's get it off. Get you out of the way. Looks like the rod is completely down. That's what we'd expect. All right, let's go ahead and take a measurement right now. See where we are. Looks like eight millimeters. So it's at its furthest position down, it's eight millimeters above the spacer. There it goes, it's moving up. Looks like that's the, that's the maximum. It's not moving anymore. And sure enough, close to top dead center, cylinder number one, our mark is actually right here. So very close. Let's measure this again. And looks like 10, 11, 12 millimeters. So that looks pretty good. The amount of travel on this should be between four and five millimeters. So we're at four, maybe a little more than four. So I think we're good. We can go ahead and start. At least at this point, we know we're not going to overdrive the pump and that's probably more important. At this point, we can go ahead and install our pump. We want to make sure we pack the bottom of it with some grease because we don't want this mechanism locking up on the pump. Now, quickly, there, there are two different types of pumps for these cars, whether the car has a generator or whether it has an alternator. So in the mid 70s, 73, something like that, they went to an alternator. The alternator has a bigger diameter. So it caused an interference on the old pumps, which were the taller pumps. And the alternator cars are going to have a shorter pump. That's fine. But what happens is that the rod is a different length for each one. The taller pump needs a little bit slightly longer rod and the shorter pump a little bit shorter rod. So on this car, things got totally mixed up. It ended up with a short rod for a short pump, but then a tall pump. And that was our problem in the, uh, originally. So. Just be conscious of what kind of, that's why we bought the whole kit, because the whole kit comes with the pump and the rod and the spacer and the whole, whole nine yards. So it's going to give you a really good starting point as to where you need to be. And you won't be wondering whether you got the right size rod for the pump that you got and all that fuss. We're just going to go ahead and pack our pump, a little bit of grease in here. Just want to make sure there's a bit of grease in here. You don't have to go crazy with it, but. All right, we're ready. We just refit our new pump. And look at that, it goes right on without any kind of interference. Now, the pump is sitting up, of course, so let's go ahead and rotate the engine, to get it down. All right, that should be enough. Okay, there we go. And now our pump sits down where it should. We just replace our washers and a nut. Actually, a little easier to get to with the distributor cap off, huh? We can use our socket to go ahead and seat this down a little bit. To torque the bolts on the fuel pump, I've got this inline um, torque meter, I guess is kind of what it would be. It's, it's the same thing as sort of a torque wrench, but it has an electronic readout. So we can hit this little center button and turn it on and it will read on the display just what, we're, what, what torque we're applying. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to give this a try. So it's reading zero right now. Go ahead and 
I've already cinched this up. So six, seven, eight. Here we go. 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. 14. So that's what we're looking for is 14. So that's great. Now the one in the back is a little harder to get to. I'm going to use a smaller little universal so it doesn't get all uh, stuck behind the pump there. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right, so let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There we go, 14, just kissing it. There we go, 14. With our pump all torqued down, the next step's going to be to replace the fuel lines and go ahead and get them put back on. And then we're gonna start the car and warm it up a bit. We need to, need to be able to test the fuel pressure while the engine's running pretty fast. So I wanna get it warm first before we go and do our pressure tests. Now I'm going to hook up the line that goes up to the carburetor first and the reason is because the line that's coming from the tank could uh, potentially push some fuel through the filter and, and then we could get it going all over the place and that would be a bummer. So the line out on this pump is the bottom hose and the line in is the top hose. So we're just going to go ahead and hook up our line out to the bottom down here. go. Put our line back on. Wipe up any excess fuel here. Now we just go ahead and put in our line from the tank. There we go. And tighten that guy up. Try up any fuel we have here that might have spilled. One last quick check and then we'll go ahead and uh, put our distributor cap back on. Okay. Next we'll start the car and go ahead and get it warm. good and dry. Next step is to check the fuel pressure. So we're going to turn the car off and hook up the pressure gauge. So hooking up our pressure gauge is pretty straightforward. We just want to tee off the line as it's going into the carburetor. So I've got a couple of pieces here and a plastic tee and I'm going to hang my meter over here or my gauge and once we get this connected we're going to head start the car again and check the gauge as, it, as, as the uh, pressure goes up, it'll, the gauge will roll up here on the top and we'll go ahead and check to see what our pressure is. Once we're sort of set up here with our T installed, we're going to need to pull the line off the top of the carburetor. So remember, it's going to be a little bit under pressure, so there'll be a little bit of fuel, so be ready for that. Probably going to go a little nuts. Yep, there we go, a little bit of gas. As expected. Okay. So our line is set up like this. This line here is the one going off to the gauge. This is going to come in from the uh, fuel pump. I'm going to tighten that down. It doesn't come off. Be bad. All right, and then this line is going to go on to our carburetor. There we go. Okay, so we've got the line coming out of the pump through the filter, going back into the carburetor just as it was before, although we've teed off here to go to down here to our meter. So that's our meter. We're all set here. 
With our gauge all hooked up, we're all set to start the car again and read our fuel pressure. Well, look at that. Our pressure is awfully high. It's almost 5 PSI. About 4 and 3 quarters. We'll go ahead and shut off the engine. And we can see the pressure's dropping on the gauge. Yikes. Went all the way down to zero pretty quickly. That could mean one of two things. Either it's pushing the pressure back through the pump or it's blowing past the needle and seat on the carburetor. So more than likely it's blowing past the needle and seat. It's just not designed for that kind of pressure. What we're looking for is somewhere around 2.4, 2.5 PSI. So, <laughs> So that puts us in kind of a, a interesting place. Now, the Volkswagen manual will tell you the way to correct this problem is to add some gaskets underneath the pump, which pushes it up a bit and reduces the push or the throw of the rod below it. The only problem with that is that these aftermarket pumps are putting out so much pressure, you'd have to raise the pump almost a quarter inch or even further or you'd have to go in and grind the rod down in order to get the pressure down. And by the time you did that, the flow would be so low that you risk at high speeds running very, very lean because then the output of the pump can't keep up with the needs of the carburetor and the engine in general. So what do you do? I mean, that's a great question, right? Uh, I believe that Volkswagen was, that was the correct procedure for an original Volkswagen pump. But these pumps must have, I'm guessing, a stiffer diaphragm in them and they can maintain a higher pressure. So I think I've done a bunch of research on this and tried to figure out what to do. I think I really, if you're going to use one of these aftermarket pumps, I think your only solution really is to add a pressure regulator. And the pressure regulator will roll the pressure down or you can set it to whatever you want it to be, but it will keep the flow constant. And that's the key is we still need that flow, but we need it at a lower pressure. So hang on just a sec. So I've purchased this pressure regulator. It's a uh, pretty low pressure, but it's adjustable, which is great. You just push this little knob in, you can turn it, and it'll sort of click in lock into one setting for you. So it goes from 1 all the way over to 5 PSI. So we can kind of lock this in. We want to be at about 2.5. It comes with threaded uh, in and out on this thing. Um, I have some barbs, threaded barbs, to go in here. So these guys here, and we can go ahead and attach our fuel lines to it. Now, really quick about these threaded barbs. A lot of people will use um, sort of, these, these are conical, you know, standard plumbing fittings is really what these are. But people will use uh, thread tape on this, that um, Teflon thread tape, and wrap it around there to get it to seal. It sounds like kind of a good idea, and there are some thread tapes that will uh, be able to handle the gas and things. But the problem is that pieces of that on the inside can break off and flow through and into your carburetor and stop things up. So a better solution is, I think, to use some of this Permatex that we used on the gasket. I checked this stuff, and it's designed for these sorts of threads as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, lube these guys up with this Permatex, install them and tighten them up. And then we're going to go ahead and install this guy in line. Now what I'm going to do just to test it is to pull the fuel filter out. And I'll just splice this guy in. We'll see where we are. And if we can get it to be where we want it, we'll go ahead and figure out the plumbing later. Now this Permatex is sticky, sticky stuff. Just going to add enough to go around the threads there. Like that. This is Forma Gasket Sealant Number 2. Uh, sealant number three would also work as well and may even be maybe a little bit better, but I think this is going to be fine. You want to make sure you coat the threads really well. These particular barbs are an 11 millimeter. All right, tighten those in. And we just go ahead and do the other side just like this one. 
I've got our regulator set to two and a half PSI here. We'll see how close it actually is. I'm going to go ahead and pull the fuel filter out and splice it in. Now on our regulator there is an in and an out so we're obviously going to be hooking the part that goes to the carburetor to the out. Probably best to go ahead and empty the fuel filter first. There we go. Make sure our regulator is set to two and a half PSI. Make sure we mop up any extra fuel that we see that's out here. So we're checking our connections, they all look good. Let's go ahead and start the engine again and see where we are. See the car was difficult to start? That's because the pressure that was left over had pushed through the needle and seat and flooded the engine out a little bit. That's great. It's at just right around 2.5 PSI. That's great. Boy, that's great. Even at high RPMs, our pressure is holding super steady, which is great. And we don't have any leaks around any of our fittings. So. I think the pressure regulator is doing exactly what it should do. So what if we change this, up, just out of curiosity, up to three? Look at that, it goes right up to three, three and a half, four, back down to three and a half. Yep, look at it drop back down, back to three, comes back down. All right, and we're gonna end up at 2.5. Yep, there it is. There's two. It's a little low. Go up to 2.5. There we go. That's great. That thing's working awesome. Okay. Well, that's a big success. So I don't know, if you, if you come out to the garage and you smell a bit of gas after a run, there's a reason for that. It's, it's possible that your uh, pressure is too high, it's blowing past the needle and seat, it's going down the uh, throat of the carburetor, ending up in cylinders, and you're smelling that gas sort of percolating and coming back up out of the air cleaner and stuff. Yee, I don't smell anything right now. And if you look, our pressure is still holding true at two and a half PSI. So that's really great. That also means that it hasn't blown past the needle and seat. So at this point, we just have to figure out a way to sort of mount this thing and, um, and reinstall our fuel filter as well. Well, this is what I came up with with the mount. So here's our regulator. This line here is the line out of the pump and into the input of the regulator. Back here we're coming out and going up through our fuel filter and then back up here to the top of our carburetor. This other line here is the line into the pump or from the gas tank. So I set this up in such a way that we can kind of get at it. I, you can still adjust it here pretty easily. There's a, I just used the metal bracket that came with it and pounded it flat and hooked it to this uh, tin screw back here. I think that should work pretty well actually. So I did swap out uh, the fittings that came with the regulator here with 90 degrees just to make things work a little bit better. And this is quarter inch fuel line. I'm going to go ahead and start the car and just make sure we don't have any leaks in all of our new fittings. Okay, well that sounds 
great, engine's running great. We have no fuel leaks on all of our new parts in here, so hang on just a sec. Whew, that's better. So we have no leaks in anything. It all looks great in here. Engine sounds like it's running great as well. So I think we're pretty much all done. All I'm gonna do is go ahead and refit the air cleaner and go ahead and get that back on. I had to pull a tube out over here. We'll put that back on as well and we'll be all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of the replacement of a fuel pump and the installation of a pressure regulator in a Volkswagen Beetle. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you've got somebody you think would like it, it would be awesome if you could share the video. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. I'm also going to link all of the stuff that I used in this down below as well. So thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, safe travels. Bye.